Hello and welcome to this mission, which I am very excited to show you guys today. It is constructing a space station using an SSTO, which admittedly is not the most original idea. But as you can see there, there's the modules we're going to be putting up there. And there's the fuel truck, because what makes this different, I think, to the other SSTO built space station videos is the fact that we're only using the one SSTO and it's going to be a constant mission, as in I'm not going to be recovering the flight, I'm not going to be using the space plane hangar at all, everything is going to be done, you know, live as it were. What I mean by this is that once we've delivered our first payload into orbit, we're going to be flying the SSTO back to the runway, then a truck will come and fill it up with fuel, and another little car will go and push the next payload into it, before taking off again and then coming back and getting the next payload and sending it off once more. So while the actual design of the station modules and the station itself might not be the most impressive things, I think I kind of wanted to showcase this more from an actual mission standpoint and the way this is built because I was really, this is something I've wanted to do for a little while and I never really got round to doing it, so, you know, this is that. I've also never designed a cargo SSTO before, not like a proper one. I did do one in my collaboration station video, but that really couldn't carry very much to orbit. It was basically built to be a long range thing that had sort of a small cargo capacity inside it. Now, I didn't mean to crash this car here, um, but that will buff out, don't worry about it. I actually parked it here just so we could have something to target uh, to mark the end of the runway when we come in to land this plane, because unfortunately you can't target buildings in Kerbal Space Program yet. I don't know why, but you can't. And we want to really be aiming to undershoot the runway. We need the entire length of the runway for this orange tank payload because it is the heaviest payload by far, the other ones are over 10 tons lighter, so we really need the entire length of the runway in order to get airborne. The subsequent flights won't need the full length of the runway, but it will need as much runway as we can possibly get. So in order, And because of the fact this thing can't taxi and I didn't design any tugs for it, we want to be landing in a position where we're as far back as possible in order to get as much you know, speed as possible before taking off. I hope that makes sense. It will hopefully make sense once you see it. So at the moment we're currently pitching up at around 20 degrees, which is a fairly conservative pitch. The uh, other flights that we're going to be doing in this video uh, will be will be able to be a little bit more aggressive during our flight, but as I mentioned, the orange tank is by far the heaviest payload. The reason I'm... that's the main reason I'm sending this off first, not only because of the whole runway issue I mentioned, but also because of the fact that because it's the heaviest payload by far, we're going to have a lot less Delta V uh, to work with when we actually get into orbit. So if we had to rendezvous with another station part, we'd have, we would very, it would be very tight <laughs> in terms of the numbers. So it would be far, it, make, it makes a lot more sense. It's far easier to put the heavy bits in first and then getting lighter and lighter as you go on. One of the nice things about this aircraft is that we can build up a pretty impressive amount of speed. Look, 1500 meters per second just then. We are dropping a bit now. But yeah, over the sort of previous updates and things, heating has been buffed a little bit. So we can get to quite a bit of speed and we want to be getting as fast as possible on the air breathing mode alone because the closed cycle mode of the rapiers is not very efficient but here we are gradually approaching our apoapsis so we may as well pitch up nice and aggressively and fire up the closed cycle mode because now we just want to get out of the atmosphere so i did start watching the thing here and i realized that i'd forgotten to disable the fuel flow uh, for the orange tanks the orange tank is actually being drained some of its fuel so i quickly disabled that don't worry we will be we will be depositing it full we'll just pump some of the fuel from the ssto back into the orange tank but I think in a way that was actually quite a, that worked out quite well because it meant the aircraft was quite balanced. If the fuel, if the orange tank wasn't used, then this would have ended up becoming quite front heavy and may not have been quite as easy to pitch up. Here we go. We'll just pump some of the fuel back in. I guess we could just skip through all of that process. There we go. So don't worry, we will be putting the full orange tank in orbit, and we still have a pretty generous amount of delta v left obviously we're going to be spending about 400 meters per second to circularize but we still have a load of oxidizer left over after that maneuver too we'll tweak our orbit a little bit you don't really need to see me doing that because it was a bit of a long process but i ended up getting an orbit of roughly 90,000 meters which is nice and high up but it's not so high that we it'll be difficult for us to you know get that high and there's a nice little beauty shot of the cargo doors closing again all looking nice there and then we'll just focus on 
deorbiting ourselves once again. So some of you might be wondering how this thing is getting power because it's not really running out of electric charge even though there's no visible solar panels. The reason is some of the eagle-eyed among you may have already seen this but inside the cargo bay there is that's where the probe core is that's controlling it. There's an SAS wheel as well as some batteries and some RTGs that are generating power for it. Now we are gonna overshoot the KSC here by the looks of things. That's it there. We're passing over it right now. Almost sort of underneath those clouds here on that little peninsula so we're gonna have to do <laughs> some rather aggressive uh, banking of the plane then we're gonna have to swoop down and pass by on the right hand side and swing around again this way we can make sure we're all landed at the back of the runway which is where we want to be to get enough speed up so we can get our next ascent on the go now as you can see at the moment we currently have that crashed rover set as our target this just helps us line up with the runway because it's not always uh, easy to reliably line yourself up by eyeballing it so here we go swinging down keeping our speed nice and low we're going to deliberately undershoot just so hopefully we roll up that little ridge bleeding off just enough speed so that we end up i didn't i didn't do a particularly good job here but we can bleed off some of our speed by going up that small hill and we've ended up pretty far back so this yeah, it could have been a lot worse and we can just time warp just to get ourselves pointed in the right direction physical time warp just makes SSTOs easier to spin around on the spot and then we can begin our next stage so in order to get the ramp to touch the ground we do need to retract the uh, front landing gear and we can just reduce the deploy limit a little bit to make this a little bit easier to load cargo onto we still need those aero spikes on those uh, cars just so they can build up enough speed and acceleration and just general pushing power to get the cargo up the ramp but we only need a little bit of fuel expenditure to actually do that so again just time warping here to get to the actual loading itself just being very careful to load this on firing up that engine sparingly but you know just enough to get it on and there we go all docked now obviously the craft has a very very small amount of oxidizer and liquid fuel so as i mentioned earlier we're going to be having to refuel it and we're not going to be doing that using an isru even though we've just loaded one on because <laughs> yeah, i accidentally capsized the rover but using the weird collision um, quirk that the physics engine has we can use those side uh wheels just to help flip itself back up we can go and park this somewhere we don't need to destroy it there's no need you know i'm a I'm a peace-loving person. <laughs> uh, again, I know you, don't, you don't really need to watch the entire drive. We'll just swing it around to this building here and park it up in the car park. <laughs> anyway, like I was saying, we could refuel this using the ISRU uh, that we just loaded up. But instead, we're going to do it properly. We have this fuel tank that I've constructed here. Obviously, we have two of these fuel tank trailers just because we're going to be refueling this thing again to get the final module up but for now we're going to drive forward we need a lot of wheels here just to provide uh, enough support without braking and also to provide enough driving power to actually get there our electric charge is driving quite rapidly we do have solar panels and rtg so we can recharge ourselves intermittently but other than that there's not really a lot else to it other than just you know reversing around and then backing it up until we got our encounter and here we go just with the camera zoomed right in i had to zoom quite far in to get the alignment right but i knew these things would be the right height anyway and there we go so it was quite a long process in order to transfer all the fuel over manually because regrettably the ssto has quite a lot of fuel tanks on it so uh, we can just skip through most of the actual fuel pumping itself but here's just me selecting the tanks just to demonstrate to you how it worked um, but like I say, you don't need to see the whole thing. Long and short of it is, we can undock that uh, truck trailer and drive this thing away out of the way of the plane. So this thing doesn't <laughs> doesn't have the best turning circle, but you know, it, it works. It'd be nice if uh, maybe I could have incorporated some sort of stock hinge for the actual joint between the truck and the trailer. But again, it didn't really matter too much. I mean, this has steering on all the wheels, so it wasn't too much of an issue. And then we can just undock the trailer and get ourselves ready to dock onto the next one. But we can do that later because for now, I think we're ready to launch the SSD once again. So there we go. Par closing up the front end of the cargo bay. Just having a look at the map view here, I'm going to start launching it. You can see the space station there. So we're just over the desert at the moment. So this is about as good a time as any to actually launch the SS2 once again. So there we go, firing up the rapiers there. We have the station set as our target. And you can see this time we don't even need to get to the end of the runway to get ourselves airborne. And this isn't even the lightest module. So by the time we get to the third module, we, 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 don't, really, we don't really need much runway space in order to get ourselves off the ground. But as you can see, we are able to pitch up much more aggressively than before, almost sort of 35 degrees as opposed to the you know, less than 20 degrees I was pitching up at before because we have a, a lot more power to weight in terms of what we have this time around. 
so it's much much easier and more forgiving to fly so if you're not the greatest ssto pilot and would like to get better then perhaps skip over the actual orange tank payload and just use the lighter ones for now because they're far more easy to fly and it's a lot more forgiving so we're getting really hyped into the atmosphere now so this is as good a time as any to fire up the closed cycle mode of the rapiers and get our orbit nice and high now you can see my encounter isn't the greatest so i continued to burn to get the markers close together and i just played around with maneuvered it until i got a uh, you know a desirable encounter so we haven't actually circularized at this point so we're not going to be getting anywhere close but you know it's good to at least somewhat plan ahead so we um, our separation still quite fairly far apart but i guess you can just see how i'm playing around with maneuver notes we can skip ahead to the actual encounter itself so yeah just doing some small puffs from the rapier and here we get attacked by the kraken you can see i undocked it here and everything just exploded and shook itself to pieces and i tried this again and again and again thank you for quick thank you quick save for that but it just didn't work so in the end what i had to do was uh, use the orange tank as a sort of tug so i maneuvered it to the front and undocked the whole thing as one piece and that for some reason seemed to stop everything going wrong so i'm not quite sure not quite sure what was happening but i'm glad i could find a fix for it uh, so we can close the bay modules again and do a quick beauty shot of the lights lighting up and deploying the solar panels. We will be deploying a larger set of solar panels in the final module, but we've got these little ones for now just to provide some power for what's up there so far, although there's no crew to support at the moment. And then we can burn once again to get our encounter with the Kerbal Space Center. Now, for the sake of keeping this at a sort of reasonable time length, I didn't show it in too much detail. What I had to do here was just pump a lot of the fuel from the posterior engines uh, a lot further forward into the uh, front tanks, namely the liquid fuel tanks. You can't really zoom too well because I'm doing this crazy roll to try and bleed off enough speed because I was worried I was going to un. Uh, where I was going to overshoot the Kerbal Space Center again, but I, it was all right in the end. As I was saying, I managed to pump in a lot. Of the, I pumped a lot of the fuel from the posterior tanks into the front tanks, namely the Mark One fuselages that flank the actual cargo bay itself, just to provide a bit of stability. Because if the fuel, if there's too much fuel in the rear tanks, you end up being quite um, rear heavy, and it becomes very, very hard and unforgiving to steer. So I didn't do a fantastic job here. I ended up stopping almost halfway up the runway, but. You saw how quite easily I was able to take off before, and again, this module is a lot lighter than the last one, so I wasn't worried at all about not being able to get into orbit. So, other than without further ado, we can just manoeuvre the car into position and drive it onto the uh, drive it into the cargo bay, preparing ourselves for the third and final flight of this video. We could have gone on, um, like I say, we could have just built more trucks and more modules and continued going this on, but I didn't want this video to be going on too long and. KSP's frame rate when there are lots of vehicles within the physics range is pretty atrocious so I didn't want to be playing at 5 FPS for the sake of being able to do more modules so maybe I could do a follow-up series with this perhaps even using a rocket like SpaceX would do rather than using an SSTO but that's all for the future this is really just something I wanted to do with a space plane and refuel it and everything just so I could show off not only the space plane but also to show off the truck this isn't actually the first video that that truck has been shown in although I'm talking about it now watch can't even see it maybe I should just start talking about it when it's actually in shot we can just park up the car for now leave it in the car park and get ready to open up the docking bays there we go so like i say this isn't the first video used that's used that truck i did use the exact same uh craft file in junior attacks it didn't actually show it doing its thing but it was used to refuel one of the ssto's that was used in the i think it was the penultimate episode the truck made a very brief appearance for the first sort of 20 seconds or so obviously the uh, trailer for this one needs to be much bigger to fully fill this new ssto so the trailer in this video is different but the truck itself is completely unchanged from junior attacks so some of you may recognize it from that a lot of people thought it was hazardous truck that i just used it's not it's different it does well, there are quite a few big differences of it but regardless we can reverse ourselves slowly if you choose to download the craft file for the truck which i'm bundling with the ssd which you can get in the description as always uh, one thing if you're struggling to get it to dock with the trailer one thing i did build into the trailer was some aircraft um, wheels just sit th at the front of the trailer so the idea is you deploy them and it raises up the front just so you can more easily drive the truck underneath to dock it i would also recommend having a engineer cable oh, we can just show just showing some of the fuel getting pumped but again i'm not going to show it in its entirety because it took a very 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 long time to actually do it anyway like i was saying i would recommend having an engineer and at least one of the crew uh, seats in the truck just because the front wheels have a bit of a tendency to break unfortunately 
but luckily they can all be repaired from the cab itself. You do have to take the Kerbal out of the command seat, but then they can just stay, they can just walk around the cab in order to get close enough to the wheels to repair them. So, you know, that's just something I'd recommend, and we can park it up in the car park before preparing to set our encounter with the final, with the space station so far, so we can close off the uh, docking port. I don't, we kind of launch it, we're kind of launching at the same kind of period as the other one. I left it a little bit later this time because I was so far, so far ahead of my target last time. So I left it a little bit later this time, but the best way to learn how to do this is just through trial and error yourself. So you, know, you don't see too much of that. Anyway, pitching up fairly aggressively, uh, not quite as steeply as last time because it was just ended up being slightly easier to reach the magical 400 meters per second required for the rapiers to fully engage in terms of their thrust. They don't thrust that much until they're going past about 410 meters per second, something like that. And then we can pitch up in close cycle mode and get our orbit finalized. So if we just raise up our apple, as you can see, already we're much closer and then the target nodules appear. <coughs> And we're pretty close. We're not. It's not perfect, but we are pretty close. So I'm not going to worry this time about setting a maneuver node that gets us nice and close because we're fairly close anyway. And we just need to circularize because this time uh, it's going to take about 600 meters per second to circularize. So we're not going to be able to get a very accurate maneuver node in terms of getting an encounter anyway. So I wasn't too worried about doing our encounter there and then. We can just wait our time. And I kind of skipped ahead of it because. There was quite a lot of fine tuning and tweaking. I don't think it's the most engaging thing for you to watch. So I skipped through most of that. If you'd like to w watch a tutorial about Rendezvous, then there are other YouTubers who've already done that. So I don't really feel the need to explain it in detail, especially given the uh, rather challenging nature of this video. Uh, I don't think this is the best thing to try and emulate if you're not that great at docking or Rendezvous or anything like that. So there goes our final module. So we just have some nice crew capacity storage, some batteries, and a couple of command pods, one of them being the observatory. So we can just dock that on to the science lab module. I try and design my station so that the crew wouldn't ever be transferring through batteries or fuel tanks or anything like that, because it feels a little bit unrealistic. So as you can see, they would just be moving through docking ports between habitation modules. And then I thought it would be look, look a little bit cooler if the orange tank was coming off at this angle here. It doesn't really serve any additional purpose there, but, you know, whatever. Actually, I think in hindsight, it probably would be more sensible to dock it to the station using the senior docking port, just because most ships that we dock into this will use the normal size docking port, but uh, it, we can reconfigure it later if we want. And there's our obligatory beauty shop there. Then now we can just, I guess, we can leave it now. That's that's the station all that's the station. That's the station all built. So we can take this thing back to Kerbin for the final time. So we can fire up the engines for the final time and plan our encounter with the runway. Now, like I say, this mission is pretty ridiculous. Uh, it doesn't serve any real practical purpose, but it is very, very satisfying to pull off. Oh, there's a quick shot of me pumping the fuel forwards. Like I say, if you wanted to do this, I mean, it's not, it's 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 a bit of a chore and it's a bit of a pain in the neck to, to actually deal with the low frame rates on the runway at first. And it's far more sensible to just do it from the space plane angle because you know, your SSTO doesn't, you need to worry about loading cargo onto it. But this is just such a satisfying mission to pull. Once you do it, it's very, it's a it gives you a pretty good sense of, you know, yeah, I, that's a thing I did. <laughs> you can see I actually massively, massively overshot the Kerbal Space Center this time, so I had to start flying back. We do have enough Delta V to get there. I mean, we have 7,000 meters per second of fuel. I was very liberal in my use of it, though, because I decided that, you know what? I've landed at the Space Center quite a few times already. Let's land somewhere else. So we're going to land at the second runway. That's the one just over the um, sort of ocean that separates those little islands from the Kerbal Space Center itself. There's this, there's this airfield here. Um, thought it'd be nice to just land it here. But that's about it. That pretty much wraps this video up. So I guess we can do the nice uh, cinematic zoom out effect. And then just have a look at the space station itself in orbit for, you know, properly this time. So there it is there. You can see our science modules there. We've also got our a little shot of the observatory there. Uh, Kerbal chilling in there, having a look at the view of nothing because he's not facing the planet. And there's the other two chilling in the lab there but uh, that pretty much wraps this video up so i hope very much that you enjoyed it uh on screen in a minute there's going to be some videos that take you to some 
other things I've built. Okay, so top left is a roving bass I sent to Juna. Top right is the music video version of this video, which I was very proud of and highly recommend. And the bottom right is one specially selected by YouTube for you. And other than that, uh, thank you for watching this 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 one.